Hello everyone, it's me Bryson P and welcome to today's video. Today, for the first time, we're going to be checking out Geography Now, and this video is about Denmark. So it's Geography Now, Denmark. Before we get into that video, I gotta address the elephant in the room, which is our package. As you can tell, it was opened by the U.S. Customs and Border for Agriculture and the FDA, all that good stuff. Let's go over what was supposed to be in this package, okay, because there's quite a bit actually missing. Just some traditional stuff from Norway to spread on bread. Some portion packed for your convenience. Best eaten after being in the refrigerator. Liver plus dye, which we know what that is, and we have a can already in the refrigerator. Can be topped with mayo and or cucumbers, pickled cucumbers, which is missing from here. And then the mackerel and tomato sauce, which can be topped with mayo and or cucumbers. We do have that, it's right here. So we got that. Here's pictures of how it's going to be prepared. And then I don't know how to pronounce this. Svolve pastai. But we got that, which is made up of cod liver and hard roe. I don't know how to pronounce this, but it is a nice place up north. Population about 4,500 people. It's also a place where you can see the northern lights. Best between August and April. Jedir Seidelt. It's made of uh, ground pork meat, traditional food from west of the country. I got the taste of that uh, style during my time in the army. Then also there's supposed to be one elk sausage, a elk sausage with the taste of aquavit, and then one deer sausage, one gamey sausage, and two reindeer sausages. Yes, two, as the second one was for me, and the third one is for my friend in Arkansas. If you've seen my video where I got the reindeer sausage, this one was from the same person who sent the reindeer sausage the first time and was an awesome enough person and, and gracious enough to send more stuff. Unfortunately, I forgot that we can't have meat products and those types of things. You know, there's obviously restrictions to the mail, so it just ain't gonna happen. That being said, I will be adjusting some of my items that I have in the 5,000 subscriber giveaway because I want to make sure that whoever does win that is going to get everything that is sent to them. So anything that gets taken out of the 5K first place giveaway box, um, that, that item will be replaced with something and will be allowed in your country. Last but not least... There was some smash because I'm not sure if you liked it or not. And you sent me two of them. There's one right here and one right here. It's completely empty. I already ate it. I did take it to work. I shared it with some friends at work. And then I had a friend come over after work. And we ate the rest of it together. Awesome stuff. I love it. So thank you for that. Because this week was my first week back to work. I had to work extra throughout the week to make up some hours. And then I also had to work on Saturday. So I was pretty busy this week getting back and also still kind of feeling a lot better. I feel tremendously better after recovering from having COVID. However, I don't have an update for you guys on my travel plans to Scandinavia for 2022. However, I will have a true full update for you guys next Friday. Now, let's get into today's video about Denmark. Remember in the Angola episode, I mentioned how I went to Denmark one time and bought a sandwich that was $21? Well, this was that sandwich, and my reaction was like, $21? Oh, this better be the best sandwich I've ever had in my life. <laughs> you got lucky. It's time to learn geography. No! Hey, everybody, I'm your host, Barbie. Legos, Vikings, and Rol Gold Methol. We got a lot to cover, so let's jump in. Okay. Uh let's jump in. Denmark, the link between the rest of Europe and Scandinavia. So much to discuss. Denmark is classified as a Nordic country, hence located in the Northern European region, even though it's kind of like the southernmost state in the Nordics. Full disclaimer, ignore Wikipedia. I'm going to pronounce the location names in their proper Danish context. So here we go. Denmark is made of the Jutland, not Jutland, peninsula that connects to Germany in the south, as well as 1,419 islands. Of those, only 443 are named and 74 are inhabited. With the largest island being Shelland, not Zealand, which is not to be 
confused with Dutch Zeeland, which is not to be confused with New Zealand, although they did get their I name- I can't take it! That's too much information! It is connected to Foon Island, not Finn Island, by the Great Belt Bridge completed in 1998. The country is divided into five regions, the capital being Copenhagen, located on Schelland. Copenhagen is home to a myriad of historical sites, palaces, statues, residential units that are all the same height and style, with pockets of colorful, quaint, cozy shops and cafes, and dangerous bicycle lanes that you are not supposed to walk on. Now this is where things are gonna get a little spiced up, and by spiced up I mean freezing cold and covered in whale blubber. Denmark, for those of you who didn't know, is a kingdom, one of the last surviving ones in Europe, and is currently under the headship of chain-smoking Queen Margaret II. These still- I did know that. Learned that a few videos ago, actually fall under Danish sovereignty and make up the massive Greenland Island and the Little Faroe Islands. Both of these places are radically different from mainland Denmark. For one, Greenland is primarily inhabited by native Inuit tribal peoples that live on the island and is 80% covered in ice year-round. The Faroe Islands are a conglomeration of 20-ish mystical cloudy windy islands that have this crazy looking lake that looks like it's about to spill over the cliffs into the ocean. These two areas have their own self-governing home rule. Look at that. That's awesome that looks like it's about to spill over the cliffs into the ocean. These two areas have their own self-governing home rule, otherwise only depending on Denmark for military, justice, currency, and foreign affairs. Otherwise, I mean, that's pretty much it. I mean, historically, they did try to kind of create an empire by colonizing parts of the Caribbean, Ghana, India, and then in the Nicobar Islands and the Indian Ocean, but they kind of ran out of money and ended up selling everything to other countries. Too bad, it would be awesome to see people in the Indian Ocean speaking Danish. Nonetheless, mainland Denmark is kind of like a fast-moving economic machine. Let's talk about how. All right. Now, Here when it comes go. to land makeup, Denmark is pretty flat. I mean, the highest point, Mullehoy, is only about 170 meters tall, and it looks like this. Otherwise, only about 13% of the country is forested, including really? the tree plantations, and the rest is pretty much used for agriculture that can produce enough food to feed about 15 million people. So Denmark looks pretty much just like this. Apart from the city, Whenever you go outside, this is what a lot of Denmark looks like, because if that's what Denmark really, I mean, if that's what a lot of it looks like, then that's, that looks an awful lot like here, and an awful lot like the rolling hills that we have here. Of their entire population. Good for you, Denmark. But one thing Denmark is actually famous for growing is non-produce plants like grass, fodder, and Christmas trees. The highly sought after Danish Nordman fir has been classified as the Rolls Royce of Christmas trees. And every year investors from Germany, the Netherlands, and even the UK jump in at the end of November and grab whatever they can before it's gone. Now, one thing really? you need to know is that like many other- So, so Christmas trees and, and celebrating Christmas then is a big deal, I'm assuming for you guys? Other areas in the Nordic region, Denmark's weather can be quite. Do you have fake Christmas trees as well? Is that is that a thing over there? Is that popular now? As as popular, like say, as it is here. I'm I'm not sure wh where you could go here to cut down a Christmas tree. Now you could go buy one, a live one from the store, but pretty much the I, anybody and everybody that I know has a a fake one. So I'm just curious if that's still real is is most popular there or the fake ones more popular there. Uh, dreary. First of all, Denmark is the only Nordic country that doesn't really get a lot of snow. Denmark is kind of like the mud pit located below the jet stream blocked by Norway and the UK. This means that even though it gets really cold, pressure systems rarely cause snow. This is also pretty much why everybody dresses like a J. Crew fall fashion line model on the streets. If you're gonna get wet and freezing, you may as well look good while doing it. Otherwise, yeah, I mean, pretty much the rest of Denmark is just rolling green plains with sandy beaches and quirky little islands that people like to hop over. Of course, minus the sandy beaches and all that. We have nothing like that here. I'm in a landlocked state, minus the the lakes and rivers that we have. For, for camping trips in the summer, if we were going to talk about Greenland and the Faroe Islands, we would get a radically different story of mind-boggling, captivating cliffs, bluffs, sea stacks, glaciers, fissures, icebergs, and mountains. If you don't know what a Mulan is, it's not this, but this. This Mulan is large enough to swallow a school bus. But we'll have to save that for another video that'll come out in 9,374 years. In the meantime, let's talk about the people. 
Now this is gonna get really fun. Denmark's people are really unique in their cultural, historical, and postmodern upbringing. First of all, the country has about 5.7 million people and is one of the highest taxed countries in the world. About 89% of the country identifies as ethnically Danish, about 11% are others. Some of the largest groups in the other category being the Polish, Germans, Turkish, Romanians, Iraqis, and Afghans. Now when it comes to Danish culture, there's a lot behind it. Um, weren't you guys one of the ones that are accepting Afghans as uh, refugees right now because of our current uh, Afghanistan issues that are that are happening? But in a nutshell, Vikings. Vikings pretty much had their start in what is now present-day Denmark and whom pretty much dominated all of the Nordic regions as far as New Finland in Canada to Estonia, which is what- New Finland? Oh, New Finland, not New Finland. Not like New England. Why most of the Nordic states and regions can pretty much understand each other when they talk. Danes, Swedes, Norwegians, and Icelanders can generally understand each other as they have the same basic linguistic structure. Sure, there are subtle discrepancies, but overall they can kind of get by conversationally. <laughs> Granted, there's a saying, the Norwegian and Swedish languages sound like dancing fairies, whereas the Danish language sounds like a dude with a potato in his mouth. Bye. Now, that being said, I've been thinking about language, and I, I haven't entirely decided yet, but I do, I, I do, honestly, for whatever reason, Norwegian just sounds like that would be something that I, I would be able to speak, or that I'd want to speak. But I don't know which, which language I would actually want to learn the most. You know, I... I do want to learn another language for sure, and especially if I plan to come and visit there in 2022, then I, I want to be able to at least be understood. Now, I know the vast majority of you understand English and can speak English as well, but it would be nice to speak in a native tongue. And By the way, anybody who wants to learn Danish, full disclosure, it's gonna suck. The J makes the Y sound, the Y makes the U sound, the V makes a W sound, the R makes a R sound, the H is silent half the time, a ton of the letters are never even used, and don't even get started on A, U, and O. I kind of discovered a little trick though when I went to Denmark. When speaking Danish, all you really have to do is kind of like pronounce the first part of the word that you think makes a sound, and then just kind of like give up on the rest of the word. For example, Kupin I'm literally just listing names of places in Copenhagen that I've been to. Honestly though, you really won't have much of a problem getting around if you speak English. Over 80% of the entire country, mostly the younger generation, speaks proficient English to the point where they don't even need subtitles when watching American TV shows and movies. Also, keep in mind, Greenland has its own language that is completely unintelligible as it's an Inuit language closer to the indigenous Inuktitut and Yupik languages found in Canada and Alaska, and Faroese is pretty hard for most Danish people to grasp as it actually has more words rooted in the ancient Norse language and it's actually more intelligible to Icelandic. Back to culture though, Denmark has definitely left its mark whether it's no so then how hard is Norwegian to learn then? Well, figures like author Hans Christian Andersen, philosopher Søren Kierkegaard, or whether- Did you pronounce his name? That's actually how you pronounce his name. Wow. It's not Søren Kierkegaard. Oh, it's- Kierkegaard. Or whether it be the invention of the loudspeaker, or Legos, or their love of handball, their impeccable architecture, love of cuisine. Noma in Copenhagen, by the way, being voted the best restaurant in the world with plates that feature live ants and moss. If you're really gonna get a feel for Danish culture though, you kinda have to know about Janteloten and Hugge. The funny thing is, Danes are kinda brought up in a social mindset that is kind of integrated into their subconscious known as Jantelon, which kind of translates to something like, you are not better than the crowd, which I know sounds kind of depressing, but it's really trying to instill a sense of equality and communal cooperation. Hugo trans- Which is where, where, what I've learned a lot so far about, you know, the Scandinavian culture and, and Denmark, and that's why I've chosen that to be my first place and the first places I go to for traveling abroad and traveling outside of the United States. Translates to something like spend good times with friends and family and it's like a cozy thing. Of course, Denmark is known for being ranked one of the happiest overall countries, even though they are also kind of one of the highest ranked consumers of antidepressants as well. But hey, they still pull off everyday life looking oh so good, even if it's during one of those really loud annual emergency drills. Okay, Christine, explain what's happening right now. Denmark is testing the sirens for uh, <laughs> warfare. We're being attacked by the Germans again. <laughs> I'm scared. I'm really, really scared right now. Let's run to this. You say once a year? When I lived in Arkansas, we did it every Wednesday at noon. 
every single Wednesday at noon, the all the weather alarms, tornado alarms, anything like that, the, the, you know, it was every Wednesday at noon on the dot. So you're now here in Kentucky, where I live now, uh, it's, I don't even know, it's every now and then. I hear it every now and then, but it's like maybe twice a year, maybe three times a year, I don't know. I, maybe twice a year. Security basement! <laughs> The Germans are coming! Speaking of Germans... Now, we all know that one person we're all kind of jealous of because they're kind of rich, well-adjusted, and have a ton of friends, and they're, like, kind of good-looking. Well, that's Norway. Denmark is a little bit rockier. No, but seriously, for such a small nation, Denmark has a huge entourage of friends, and it's almost kind of hard for anyone in the world to dismiss them at a party. As a founding member of the EU and NATO, Denmark has had roots planted in diplomacy for decades. First off, Denmark generally gets along with Germany. Business between the Germans is a hugely integral part of their economy, and Denmark acts like the gateway to scale. Scandinavia for them and the rest of Europe. The US and the UK are incredibly close as both tangible and cultural imports have been established for centuries. For a while, the Danes even took over parts of the UK, which is why to this day the English language still retains hundreds of Old Norse derived words like leg, dog, and window. The closest friends, though, would have to be the Nordic countries Finland, Sweden, Norway, and Iceland. These four are without a doubt Denmark's closest friends, even though Sweden and them have kind of had more wars and battles historically than any other two states in the world. They've moved on and grown up. Out of the Nordic countries, though, Norway would probably be considered their best friends. Danes are obsessed with Norwegians and often consider Norway the girlfriend they took away from Sweden. In conclusion, <laughs> Denmark is the rich, rainy rascal that always seems to show up on time for every party. So why are all the flags pretty much the same, just with different color? Obvi I mean, I, for obvious reasons, they're different color, different like that, to distinguish which country, but they all look the exact same, despite the color. Just curious why it is because of their friendship and their love for each other and and your camaraderie between each other and and whatnot is that the reason why all of it's just together or is, i'm sure there's probably a more logistic not logistical but logical reason but somehow gets all his work done in an organized efficient manner stay tuned djibouti is coming up next Okay, so that was Geography Now, Denmark. I definitely have a lot to learn, and I definitely have a lot that I would like to learn before I make final decisions on the places I want to actually see when I travel there. While I learn more about it and, and find, you know, strange places or cool facts or what to do, what not to do, then those will help also make final decisions coming up for the trip. Right now, we're going to stick with last week's plan, and then we will see if anything changes coming up in the next week as I have more time to really focus on that. So have a great day, great night, whatever time it is that you see this. It's me, Bryson P., Goodbye.